Afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, new potential biological control lasers that we have in quarantine at Rhodes University. I'm very excited about this insect. I think it's really good news for weed bark control, good news for our native biodiversity in forests around South Africa. And that's, that's the, the insect over there. Um, so just to start, Presca is still, Presca Kiliwata is still a massive problem in South Africa. Um, it invades native forest patches like this one um, near Port St. John's. And um, this photo, you can see all of this here. And there, and there. It's all Peresca. And it's just Peresca. Um, underneath the forest canopy, it grows at very thick and undergrowth. As soon as there's a light gap, it dominates at 100% cover. It gets into big trees and it starts smothering the canopy and it gets so heavy that the large trees collapse. So this, this plant is a serious problem and it's really working on native biodiversity. And we don't have many forests here in South Africa, so we need to look after them properly. We have one biological control agent that has been released on Peresca, and it's called Enrique Guerini. Um, it's established and it does some damage. Um, uh, Des and Nisa Sassari released this ad lots of this insect. And um, it has its place, but it definitely doesn't do enough. We've talked about um, the role of Tenrika um, in biocontrol, and we think it could be doing something, but it's, everyone agrees that we need an, another biological control agent if we really want to get a handle on this weed. So on surveys in southern Brazil, um, we had a few options. Um, there are nine species that I considered promising. And um, four of those we found are insufficiently specific uh, from uh, hosts uh, looking at other host plants in the field in Brazil and from checking on uh, museum specimens what host plants they were found on. Um, so five of them require host specificity testing. Um, the, the moth, Maripaya chlorosalis, Cryptochina species weevil, Caterinthia chaffnera, which I'll be talking about today. This is a um, cessodomyel, you can see the exit holes, and that should have turned into a fruit which is like a juicy berry. Instead it goes woody and it kills the seeds. And that's a serendipity that mines the stems. And we don't know anything about the specificity of these insects except for that. And this, the subject of this talk is my host specificity trials on the insect, and I think that you'll all be convinced that it's so specific and that we can release it. Or that I can write up a release application and ask for it. Um, so this is the insect, Catalinthus schaffneri. It's a stem wilter or splitter. Um, it is quite a damaging insect. That's a shoot of Peresia. Those are the, the nymphs, they're gregarious, and they, they feed on the shoot tips. And that's an example of stem wilting, and that's an example of stem splitting. You can see that it's actually cracked open the stem, and on the far side of the stem is cracked open. So there are no host records for this species. Um, but the distribution that we've got from museum specimens matches the distribution of Peresca Kiliata in South America, which is a very good sign. Um, and so we've continued with our specificity testing, and that's our tiny little quarantine facility where it's all happened. Um, within the Cactaceae, I've tested these um, plants, Peresca Kiliata, obviously we control. Peresca granifolia is a closely related species in the same clade as Peresca Kiliata and also Congener. Um, Presque Cuscaniana is a more distantly related um, species within the genus. And then Hylocerus and Ripsalis are primitive um, cactaceae that are, are closely related to Presque. And then I've, I've tested the Pantia orentiaca and Phytus indica. The important one here is really Ripsalis bassifera because that's the one cactaceae that we consider native here in South Africa. And that's a photo of Ripsalis bassifera. <coughs> So on Peresca, um, we the, the insects take about 23 days to get from hatching to adults. What I do is I collect the eggs, that's a little egg packet, and I keep them in a petri dish. So the day that the eggs came out, I would put 10 um, nymphs onto Peresca as a control or then onto my, my test plant. Um, so I would get 80% or, or more survival. Um, from, from the, the, the day they hatch all the way through to adults, and it takes 23 days. And I've replicated that 10 times. On the close related Peresca granifolius, this is the one that's in the same clade as Peresca Kiliata. 
Um, I need to stress that this is not a magic plant, it's actually declared weed in South Africa. Um, I've got 96% mortality before the adult stage, um, so I've only got three adults out of all of my, my 10 reps, and um, they take 33 days to get to the adult stage. So this is on the closest, the most closely related plant, getting much higher mortality, and um, they take longer to get to the adult stage. On Perestia cuscumiana, um, again, this is non-native. I've had um, absolutely no development, 100% mortality before the adult stage. And um, on Perestia cuscumiana, the mortality is within the first few days of them being put on the plant, and they all die in the first instar. On some of the other cactaceae, um, I've had a little bit more development. But again, the important thing here is I've got 100% mortality before reaching the adult stage. So, this insect can only get to the L stage on Presca ciliata and Presca grandifolia, and it doesn't like it from Presca grandifolia. Um, so on these other cactaceae, including the native Ripsalis bassifera, we got about 5% survival to the fourth instar. Um, and the interesting thing that happens here is that uh, we only get any survival if we've got really, this is a jointed cactus, Antiorentiaca, and th that really green juicy shoot is what keeps them going. And it means that a tiny, percentage of them manage to get to the fourth instar. But what happens is that they, they get to the fourth instar and then they get stuck. So the very few that make it end up looking like this insect. And I, I put the photo in, you'll never see a, a, this species looking like this on, on a toast plant. It gets very sick, it lives for up to 100 days, and then it dies before it gets to the adult stage. Um, so the closely related families to the Cactaceae are the Portulacaceae and the Basilaceae. Um, we have quite a few native Portulacaceae in South Africa, and those are the list that I, uh, of the species that I tested. Speckbone, Portulacaria afra, um, two species of Portulaca, Tadonicaphrum and Tadonicaphrum, and two Anacampus species. Uh, that's a native plant. Um, there's some debate about whether that's native or not. Talon Capra is native and the Capra species are native. But we got very limited development and 100% mortality before the adult stage, so it's insect can not feed on any of these plants. In the Basilaceae, it's the same story. I've tested those three species, um, and we have 100% mortality in the first instar. When I've looked at more distantly related families, I've tested four species in the Museum Bryant Macy, two Crassulaceae, uh, an aloe, a euphorbia. Um, and uh, Caraphylaceae, and again, no development at all, and 100% mortality in the first install. So the way forward for the Perescu project at the moment is to write up an application for release. Um, at the moment, I'm doing some adult feeding trials, and it is very clear that this insect won't eat anything else besides Perescu. Um, I'm also doing an impact study, and what I've done in the past is I've gone to, to sites where Presca is, is a major problem and I've done transects where I've uh, been monitoring the density of the Presca at these sites over many years and then looking at the native plant diversity associated with it. So we've got a good baseline measure and those are the sites which I'll first release this insect at and then hopefully we'll see a decrease in how much Presca there is and an increase in the native um, plant diversity at these sites. That's, that's just another show of how damaging this plant can be. That was a native forest tree that's just been completely covered by Perisca. And the Koreas would love that, because of all these delicious shoots. Um, my damage study is ongoing at the moment, but this, is, this was just the first rep. Now, what I did was I put 10 uh, newly hatched nymphs um, onto this plant, and get that as a control. They were both the same size, just about, before we started. And by the end of the, the trial, this is, this is one impacted by the nymph after 10 days. And that's the other one. The difference in shoot lengths was over half a meter, and that's in 10 days. So if 10 tiny nymphs, an, an egg packet will have 25 uh, eggs in it. So 10 nymphs isn't a lot. And in 10 days, it can remove half a meter of shoots. I think it could be a very impressive insect. So Thank you very much. Thanks, Ian. Any questions for Ian? Okay, thank you very much. Oh, have we got one? Yeah, I have a 
Have you had a chance to look at the fantasy of females? The fantasy of females? Uh, no, not specifically, but it's, they, they make a lot of things. They have a purely position period of about, uh, after they've got to the stage, they spend a week eating and then they start laying lots of eggs. It's extremely easy to rear, it's like a plague in quarantine. Mm -hmm. hey, what, about the, what about the other insects? I mean, they all look pretty good too. I've got um, the Cryptic um, species, that little weevil, and it's an undescribed species that the taxonomists have told me I'll never get a name on. Um, it's a really, really damaging insect that, as a larvae, it mines the stems of the plants. And I'm, I haven't done the host specialty testing yet, but I've got it in quarantine, and I've got a very good protocol to rear it, and we've got lots of them in quarantine. So as soon as I've wrapped this up, which is going to be very soon, I will start host specialty testing on the, 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 the curve, on the cryptocurrency. And the combination of killing those juicy shoots and the weevil and the stems of the plant, because the weevil gets into the thick um, wooden stems of the plant. And when, at the sites where the weevil exists in South America, you can just see the reason why there's not loads of presky like we in South Africa is because the, all the, the shoots of the, the stems are all jointed like this, because the, the curves keep, keep getting in there and killing it. Thanks, thanks Ian for a very insightful talk. Um, as part of your host spec testing, have you, do you have any data also on the, uh, type of the, the, the specificity of your uh, agent on, on the um, vegetation that's in the native uh, area that you propose to do your first releases? So you mean doing host specificity studies in the field in Argentina? Oh, that's in, in, in Brazil. Okay, uh, I mean here in South Africa. I mean, the area that you propose to release. That. Yes, the native species that grow with this plant are the native species that I've tested, really. There's, um, I mean, the Ripsalis plant, uh, the other native cactus, is one that grows in the forests um, where Perescia is. It's one of the plants that could be threatened by Perescia. Okay, so there are no chances that it could be a generalist feeder. There's absolutely no chance, no. From that, um, does everyone, if we had to vote on releasing that insect, would anyone vote against it? Because if anyone would, I'd like to speak to them. Thank you.